Hello and welcome to the video. This is about this thing here. This is the Radio Master TX16S. Now this is something that I've been waiting to get my hands on since February uh, and the Chinese New Year and then the coronavirus thing has delayed it but I finally got it in my paws. Now for those of you that have watched the channel for a while you'll know I was one of the first people to do a lot of videos on the Jumper T16 and loved the idea of this radio that we're giving people like Free Sky Run for their money. However, I, like lots of other people, found issues with that initial run and they've had several other updates which have added things like Hall Effect gimbals and also things like put the multi-protocol module internally so the bay was free for something else. Now, the uh, story behind why we have this version is long and complicated, but the short version is is that Hobby Porter, who was working with people like Jumper to create the T16, um, they parted ways with after some of those issues in the early days, from what I understand, and they have continued to develop their own version of the T16, which they have the rights to. And this is the final version. And they've spent a long time refining it and changing it. And although at first glance, this looks exactly like the other T16s that you've probably been looking at on places like YouTube, there are some big differences. So in this video, I'll show you how it comes and I'll cover all of those differences and what makes this radio a little bit different. A couple of things in here. This is uh, kind of a, a unit that's been made specifically for me, myself and a number of reviewers have had these units. I've only had it in for a day, so I've just had the initial play with it. Uh, time will tell how well it holds up over time, uh, but they've addressed all the weak points that were causing all the failures that they were struggling to support uh, through the resellers and customers. So all that stuff is taken care of. But there's a lot of extra things in here. So uh, this is more of a first look. Let me know down below in the comments what you want me to demo on this. I have got a lot of videos already on the other T16 variants. Uh, this is kind of exactly the same but has more stuff. And what I'll do is I'll make more videos after this and show all those different pieces and uh, keep you up to date with how this is going. So this is how the box arrives. Uh, all of the features and everything I'm going to kind of cover, if you wanted to kind of pause the video here and just read this, it's pretty much going to tell you everything you need to know. It has an awful lot of the stuff in here that the latest generation of T16s have, but an awful lot of extra stuff in here as well. Open TX support, uh, multi-protocol module installed in here, running the latest version of the software. And that's quite a big deal. I'll show you why in a minute. So let's just get into here and I'll take it out of the box. Now there isn't a case with it as such. However, what they've cleverly done is they've made the protective stuff uh, into kind of a case as well. The only thing in here, apart from this nice black box, is a quick start guide. Um, and it kind of covers how all the switches work and all the fabulousness about OpenTX. But opening it up, there we have the radio ready to rock and roll. Everything's installed. An SD card, believe it or not, is actually in here already. So when I fire it up in a minute, you'll see all that work. We have a battery bay much bigger. You can see that already. I'll do a comparison with uh, t another T16. And it feels so much nicer in the hands. Different ergonomics on here too. I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. We have a little cable, USB 3, which is nice to see. And <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. A little key ring, a little baby version. Um, that would have been handy for a project I was doing for a present for somebody the other day. So that's what it looks like as it comes out the box. The gimbals a whole effect. I can see that and they feel really nice. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a reviewer one, right? So I'm guessing this isn't going to be done on all of them, but it's actually embossed my name on the buttons. So thank you to Ben who sent me this review unit. That's a really, really cute touch. Uh, the battery bay. Let's have a look at how much extra room in here. Okay, so it's set up for 18650s. Uh, let me grab a couple of those and pop them in. But you can probably see here the battery bay is an awful lot bigger. So if you had a 2S 
um, lipo or battery or something else and it does also support charging there's actually two usb ports on this one for charging and also one for plugging into your computer for the simulator or whatever uh, nice bit of foam at the back stop everything rattling around plug that in okay now this is the genuinely the first turn on press the button have the Cylon effect at the top there it is all booted now this believe it or not there's a couple of uh, different versions of it uh, SKUs. Um, I'll go through those in a moment but this is the one that has the touch screen as well and the roller feels so much nicer it's actually got a steel pin in this roller which hopefully is going to make sure that it doesn't uh, doesn't snap like some of the earlier ones did on other versions of the T16. Same kind of six position switch there, which is gonna be handy for Pixel and APM. And the Hall Effect gimbals are centering absolutely spot on. So initial impressions are very, very good. Okay, enough of this. Let me zoom in a little bit and let me go through what the special features are on this radio and cover all the key points. So the first key point is those improved ergonomics. I know for a lot of people, uh, they quite like the slim feel of the T16, uh, but this TX16S has some extra pieces at the back, which makes it an awful lot nicer to hold in my humble opinion. I'm used to holding slightly thicker radios and this feels much more natural in the hand. Hall Effect gimbals are standard on all of the different views available and this one also, believe it or not, has an, a touch screen. Now there is a standard edition of this, you can actually get an upgrade kit for the screen. The only thing is, is if you look very closely at the screen, you can actually see the grid that's being used for the touch screen over the top of the image. Initially, I wasn't sure whether it was the protective coating that had that on, but it's the stuff over the top of the screen for the touchscreen sensitivity part that is giving you this slight grid. Upgraded metal roller for navigation. Uh, nice feel on that. The way that it's all modded feels lovely. Good positive clicks. And again, metal pins so that that's not going to snap, which was a common problem and uh, one that I actually had in the early days. Internally, if I take the back off, there are four screws and you also have to loosen the top cover where the multi-protocol module sits. If you take the back off internally, the radio is very different. And when I first looked at the Jumper T16, another version of this radio, I really liked the way that it was put together with the ribbon cables. However, that was one of the downsides of the radio. And I've had those ribbon cables become a little bit loose. And I think that's probably what's causing my latest issue with one of the sets of the switches on the shoulders not working. Interestingly, Radio Master have gone back to discrete wiring inside and those discrete wires are plugged in and also have little blobs of glue or something to actually make sure that those connectors don't waggle loose as well. And having had all the problems with the other construction method with those kind of ribbon cables, I am really, really pleased to see this inside the radio. My Tyrannus radio that I've had for five or six years, which this, if it lives up to the hype, is going to be replacing, has this same kind of construction and it has worked flawlessly for the last five years. Navigation is a little bit different. Um, again, I'll show you this in a minute, but we have a couple of extra buttons on the left hand side and the way the silver buttons above the four selection buttons on the left and the roller on the right perform a slightly different function on this radio to other T16s that you've probably seen. All the things you'd expect in OpenTX and stuff that I've got literally hundreds of video on. I like the switch layout better on here. Having the radio set up on the left and the model set up on the right of a button is absolutely fantastic. Let me just kind of show you how good these whole effect gimbals out the box seem to be. If I just kind of flick these around, just let them go, the centering exactly back at 0% every time. So this has been calibrated at the factory and it's also had its SD card included. 
So there's going to be three versions of this. There's going to be a TX16S standard uh, gimbal version. It's not going to have the touch screen, not going to have the Hall of Effect gimbals. That's going to be priced very competitively from what I understand. Uh, that's going to be entry level. Then there's this one here, which is about $30 more expensive. Has the Hall of Effect gimbals and includes the touch screen. And then there's the kind of the super duper one, which is this version with the TBS Micro TX. Uh, I think it's called the Masterfire Combo or something like that. Again, with a touch screen. But this has a full speed inverter at the back. So it will support full speed crossfire. Hallelujah. So for those of us that th like things like crossfire, this is a great option if you have the module. Now, there's two USB ports. There's one on the top and also one on the bottom. One is for USB charging and the other is a USB connection port into your computer for flying something like a simulator. At the bottom, you'll also see that these two other ports as well. And this again is some of the interesting stuff. These are both UARTs. Now, UARTs are something that you'd normally only see on a flight controller, but they're exposed at the bottom here so that you plug auxiliary things into the radio and have them working. And one of the examples I could use for where they might come in handy is, I don't know, plugging in an external GPS sticking it on the shoulder of the radio so the GPS is all set up and then maybe having a walk around and having the GPS location sent up to your model in the kind of follow me thing. Going into the menus, you can see here that all of the latest bits and pieces here for the multi-protocol module inside. And excitingly, it's the latest version that supports not only the older version 1.x versions of the FreeSky D16 protocol, but the FreeSky 2.1 version of the protocol. I did a video about this a couple of weeks ago about how they're not uh, interoperable. You can't use one with the other. If you have this, it doesn't matter. You can talk to both with the multi-protocol module. And that, again, is fantastic. So let me just grab my T16. It does have the broken switches on it, unfortunately, but will allow us to compare the two versions. So here we are, the uh, Jumper T16 on the left and the Radio Master TX16S on the right. Now, of course, this one, my T16 is one of the very first versions, so be aware of that. Um, later versions have the whole effect sensor, the internal multi-protocol module. Now, the first thing, of course, is that the buttons are different. We have one more button here on the T. X16i that's easier for navigation. The buttons for getting into the system and model menu and a slightly different place, much more sensible in my humble opinion on the TX16i. So I've got Hall Effect gimbals on this new radio. Later versions of the Jumper T16 come with them as well. The switches feel very similar and the switch layouts are the same. So you've got the kind of the same three position switches, the same sliders, rotating knobs and everything else in all of the same places. Turning it around so that we can kind of get a view of the back. Uh, you can see this case has changed a little bit. It's not just the front that's changed with things like the extra buttons. The back has two. The JR Bay um, has moved up a little bit, maybe. Is that what it is? Oh, I see what they've done. Okay, the gap between the JR Bay and the battery bay has been used up. Uh, I think the JR Bay's moved up slightly, but the battery bay is an awful lot bigger in this new version. I think the simplest way we show that is I slide the battery cover off the T16, put it on here. That's how much more room we have. Lots and lots of extra room if you want to use some other kind of battery technology in here rather than use the 18650s. Um, and that's a really nice touch to really have thought about that. And you can see here those uh, extra ergonomic bits at the back, which I really like. But if you like thin radios, might make it feel a little bit too thick. The last changes, of course, are on the bottom. If I flip the other one over, you can see that's where the other USB port is, where the SD card plugs in, and also where we have the exposed UART as well. So there we have it, the new Radio Master TX16S. Now this, if it lives up to the hype, is going to become my new radio. And that is because the uh, early jumper one that I have still has the problem. It's developed a new fault and I just can't trust it. I don't want it to let go or have a dicky fit when I'm flying. Where this feels a lot nicer in my hands, those ergonomics in particular, the way that it makes the radio feel a little bit thicker. I know lots of people like that on the, uh, on the other variants of the radio, but for me, the way it kind of, you hold on to it 
and the way that these little nubs at the top stop it slipping in your hand feel really nice this kind of rubbery feel it does almost feel like there should be two fire buttons on here though um and who knows that might be a mod that i do in future to add two buttons on here but uh, leave your questions down below and again i'm going to be making more videos on this radio as i continue to play with it and i'll make a series i'll put a link to the series down below and try and cover all that in the coming weeks and months thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end if you want to find out what i'm currently working on you can follow me on social media by searching for painless 360 in the usual places if you'd like to become part of the inner circle then you can become a patreon details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.